I don't think that most people realize just how important how we breathe is to our quality of life. And that includes our mental health, our physical health, and what we call performance in ways that we would not be able to otherwise if we are not breathing correctly. Breathing has been shown to alter personality. That's right. Breathing can alter personality in positive ways that allow anyone to show up to the various social and non-social endeavors of their life with more calm, more focus, alertness, and improve their overall health. What is normal healthy breathing? Normal healthy breathing is breathing about six liters of air per minute, about 12 shallow-ish breaths. And when I say shallow, I just mean, you know, casually breathing in, out, in, out. The studies that have explored the breathing patterns in a large populations of individuals who are not suffering necessarily from any one specific ailment have shown that most people breathe far too much per minute that they're engaging in anywhere from 15 to 20 or even 30 shallow breaths per minute. So they are vastly over breathing relative to how they should be breathing. And when people over breathe, their brain becomes hyper excitable at the level of the background noise. And yet they are less efficient at detecting and learning information and at focusing and so on as a consequence of this over breathing and the hyper excitability that causes. The correct pattern of breathing is going to involve two things. First of all, nasal breathing because of the resistance it provides through the nose is going to deliver more oxygen. And also what you find is that people that are breathing in the proper healthy manner are also taking pauses between breaths. Those pauses between breaths often are not present from people's baseline breathing patterns and as a consequence, they over breathe. And when people overbreathe, their brain becomes hyper excitable at the level of the background noise, less efficient at detecting and learning information, at focusing as a consequence of this overbreathing and the hyper excitability that causes. So next I'd like to address what you can do about your normal patterns of breathing. That is how you or anyone can adjust their normal patterns of breathing from an unhealthy to an unhealthy state. But the first thing we have to do, of course, is determine whether or not you're already breathing in an unhealthy or in a healthy way. And again, when I say healthy or unhealthy, I mean, are you over breathing? Are you under breathing? Are you delivering the appropriate ratios of oxygen and carbon dioxide to the tissues of your brain and body? In order to do this, we're going to do a simple test. Again, please don't do this while driving or operating heavy machinery or uh, near water of any kind. Assuming that you're not doing any of those things, I encourage you to sit down. The carbon dioxide tolerance test is a sort of back of the envelope measure of how well you are managing carbon dioxide. That is how well you can control your breathing at both the mechanical and the chemical level. So it's a very simple test. What you're going to do is inhale through your nose as deeply as you possibly can. That is, you're gonna fill your lungs as much as you can through your nose and then start a timer and measure how long it takes for you to deliberately control that exhale until your lungs are empty. If it took you 20 seconds or less to expel all your air, that is you couldn't extend that exhale longer than 20 seconds, we can say that you have a relatively brief or low carbon dioxide tolerance. If it took you somewhere between 25 and 40, maybe 45 seconds to expel all your air, then you have a moderate level of carbon dioxide tolerance. And if, for instance, you were able to go 50 seconds or longer for that discard until you hit lungs empty, you have a fairly high degree of carbon dioxide tolerance. Now, here's the deal. If you had low carbon dioxide tolerance, that is your 20 seconds or less, you're gonna write down the number three, okay? If you had moderate levels of carbon dioxide tolerance, you're going to write down the number five, or you could even put five to six. And then if you are in that bracket of people that was able to discard your air over a period of 50 seconds or more, you're going to write down the number eight to 10. Now, what are these numbers? What are we talking about? And before we get into what to do with these numbers, I want to emphasize again, this does not have to do with fitness level per se. I should also point out that if you're very stressed, that number is going to be very small. If you're very relaxed, like you just woke up after a long night of sleep and you feel great, that number is going to be extended, okay? So this is a back of the envelope measure that you're gonna use each time you decide to do the exercise I'm gonna tell you about in a moment. And the exercise I'm gonna tell you about in a moment can be done every day if you like, but you could do the exercise I'll tell you about even just once or twice a week and greatly improve your efficiency of breathing and shift yourself away from over breathing when at rest, even if you're not thinking about how you're breathing at rest. Now you're going to do 
two minutes of what most people would call box breathing. Box breathing are equal duration, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, repeat. So inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Sounds very easy, right? How long do you inhale and then hold, exhale and then hold? Well, you now know if you are in the low group of carbon dioxide discard rate, your inhale is gonna be three seconds, your hold will be three seconds, your exhale will be three seconds, and then you repeat three seconds. So each side of the box, if you will, is gonna be three seconds long. If you were in the moderate carbon dioxide discard rate category, then you're gonna inhale for five to six seconds, hold for five to six, exhale for five to six, hold for five to six. And then of course, if you were in the long category of carbon dioxide discard rate, you should be able to do an eight to 10 second inhale, eight to 10 second hold, eight to 10 second exhale, eight to 10 second hold and repeat for about two minutes. You could do three minutes if you want, but I think it's important to have protocols that are feasible for most people. And that's going to mean doing things for about two to five minutes when it comes to these breath rehabilitation exercises for restoring normal breathing. What's happening when you do that exercise? Well, first of all, you are greatly increasing your neuromechanical control over the diaphragm. This is very important. Most people are not aware of this phrenic nerve pathway in the diaphragm, and you're greatly in increasing your mechanical control over this pathway through the process we call neuroplasticity. When you deliberately focus on a aspect of your nervous system control, in particular nervous system control over musculature that normally is subconscious and you're not paying attention to, and when you actively take control of that, it requires that your brain adjust and rewire the relationship between the different components of that circuit. And the wonderful thing is that has been shown to lead to changes in your resting pattern of breathing. You don't want the box breathing to be too strained where you're, where you're really challenged to get around the whole box. You want it to be relatively easy because remember, you're trying to translate this pattern to your normal pattern of breathing. That is your pattern of breathing when you're not consciously thinking about breathing. And what are we really translating when we do this box breathing type exercise? What you're translating is the ability to pause between breaths and yet take full mechanically driven breaths that involve the phrenic nerve and diaphragm. So again, you're encouraging especially if you use nasal breathing when you do the box breathing, you're encouraging phrenic control over the diaphragm and you're getting that six liters of air per minute or so using fewer and fewer breaths over time. So this is a zero cost approach to adjusting your normal pattern of breathing at rest, which has a huge number of positive outcomes in terms of your ability to stay relatively calm, to not get the hyperexcitability of the brain, it has actually been shown in uh, various studies, and we'll talk about one in particular later, to greatly improve not just levels of calm and reduce bouts of stress, but also improve nighttime sleep. There are a huge number of benefits that can come from doing this box breathing exercise, but you gotta get the duration of the sides of the box right, and that's why you do the carbon dioxide tolerance test.